Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make lemon cookies, and this is what they look like. This is an enriched shortbread cookie, so it has a really buttery, crisp texture to it, and it has a really tangy lemon flavor. Now these are delicious plain, but if you want to dress them up and add a little more lemon flavor, what I've done here is uh, drizzled the tops with a lemon glaze. So when we're making this batter, if you have a, an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, or you could use a hand mixer, or really you could just use a large bowl with a wooden spoon to make your uh, batter. So the it's a lemon cookie, we need lemon. Uh, I'm, so what we're gonna flavor the cookies with is freshly grated lemon zest. And zest is the, the odor yellow skin of your lemon. You don't want to, uh, the white underneath, try not to grate that. And you will need one tablespoon, which is about six grams of uh, your lemon zest. Now, really, it varies from lemon to le how much zest you will get. For this, I find if you, the bumpy skin type of lemons, usually one large, but you might need two lemons, so just have a couple on hand just to make extra sure and always wash your uh, lemons before you grate the zest and try to use organic and when you're buying lemons you know try to get it yellow not too much green because the green can be kind of bitter tasting which we don't want in our cookies so to grate you can use one of those box graters those are great you could use like a hand I'm just using a hand grater uh, one of those microplanes is also very good. And I'm just going to grate. Like I said, try not to get this white underneath because that's quite bitter, which we don't want. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't want to waste any. And keep your lemon because we are going to use the juice um, for the glaze. So now, as you can see, the, uh, the zest tends to clump. And we don't want that at, like big clumps of the zest in our cookies. So what I like to do is put it into our sugar right now. So you will need, just in a small bowl, 2 thirds of a cup, which is 135 grams of granulated white sugar. And then, so I'm just gonna put I don't know whether you can see it, but there's a lot of moisture in the zest. And so I put it into the sugar, and I'll just show you what I'm going to do here, for a couple of reasons. One, it kind of flavors the sugar, which is always good, and that'll flavor the batter and give us a nice tasting cookie. But the other, the sugar will absorb the moisture in that lemon zest, and then it'll, you won't get the big clumps. Oh, I can really smell the lemon, wonderful. So just with a, I'm just using a fork or spoon. You could use your fingers if you wanna do that. And we're gonna have a really nice lemon sugar. So that looks pretty good. So now the, the this cookie, it's really the simplicity of flavors here. Just, you have lemon and so you want to use a good lemon, like I said, and the butter and eggs. So try to use a good quality butter because this is like, like I said, a shortbread cookie. So your cookies are only going to be as good as the butter and the other ingredients you use. So if you like, if you live in um, the States, try to use one of those European style butters. They are excellent. And um, you will need uh, 14 tablespoons, which is 200 grams of butter. Now you can, uh, as you know, if you've watched any of the videos, I prefer unsalted butter, but if you prefer the taste of, of salted, by all means use that. And I just cut it into small pieces just to, because what I'm going to do is just beat it until it's nice and, and um, smooth. So just on medium speed, low to medium speed. Okay, 
And as I always say too, <laughs> scrape down the bottom and the sides of your bowl as much as you need to when you're making your batter. Because you want to make sure everything gets mixed together. So now what I'm going to do is add all that wonderful lemon sugar. And I'm just, when you're doing a shortbread cookie, you don't want to beat a lot of air in your batter. So what I'm going to do is just beat this on like medium low speed. And all we're going to do is beat it until it's nice and mixed together and creamy smooth. pretty good I maybe not even a minute just maybe a minute I'm just gonna make sure sometimes that butter gets all clumped on my beater there and or you can really smell that lemon in the kitchen here very good so now what we're gonna do is this is an enriched shortbread, which means I'm going to add some egg yolks. Too large, have them at room temperature, and I'm just going to add them both at the same time. I'm just going to beat that in on medium speed. Those are really yellow yolks, because as you can see, my batter turned really bright yellow. If yours didn't at home, it's just, you know, you don't have any control over the color of your egg yolks. I'm just going to beat that just for a second more. That's it. As you can see, you could easily uh, make this by hand with a wooden spoon. It's not a hard batter to mix. So now, in a separate bowl, I have um, two cups, 260 grams of all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add to that about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. For this, I like to use either a kosher salt or a sea salt is very nice as well. And if you use salted butter, you probably could leave your salt out. And then I'm just going to add this to our batter. Let's scrape down here. And then I'm going to just mix it in until it's, I don't want to, I'm going to mix it just until it starts to clump. I don't want a solid uh, ball of batter because you want a really nice light touch when you make shortbread so they're really nice and buttery, like crisp and crumbly. So good. So now, have your mixer on low speed when you add your flour because you don't want that kind of coming up in your face. Okay, that's good. It's not a solid, but we are starting to, starting to clump together. Now, just clear my way here. So now this is really, um, I call it like a slice and bake. I'm not going to roll it out. I'm going to make things really easy. We're just going to form our batter into a log shape. Actually, two log shapes because we're going to divide the batter in half. So, okay. And I'm just going to dump it right on the counter here. So I have a clean counter. Just gonna work it together a bit. So you see, there's lots of crumbs. So looks good. So now you can. We're gonna divide it in, you know, about half. So you can eyeball it, or I'm gonna use my scale. Scale is always handy. So. So it came out about, mine came out about 620, so that's what, 310 each, 
Boy, that's right about right. See, so you could eyeball it. <laughs> so now we're going to, I just got some plastic wrap here. And I'm going to just put it on there and form it into a lock. Actually, I'm just going to roll. Now, I do, I'm doing a rectangle. You could do it in a round if you want. Sometimes if you do it in a round, what you have to do is you put it in a round and then chill it a bit and then take it out about halfway through and kind of get into a really round shape. Otherwise, it tends to flatten on the bottom side. But I'm just going to do a rectangle, make it easy. <laughs> So I'm doing, for this amount of batter, I'm doing about six inches long and about one and a half wide. So that's um, inches, so that's um, 15 by four, 15 by four centimeters. My math right there. So you can see it's not that hard to do. So I, I'm gonna actually use my ruler. It's nice to have a ruler in the kitchen just for your baking. So that's about six. And it's actually, I think I'm going to do that a little wider, maybe about two inches wide, was about five centimeters. I think it's about, yeah, maybe even a little more than that. There. I bought that pretty good. You can tell I practiced. So that's, that looks pretty good. You can always chill it a bit and, and take it out, and if it's not perfect, you can just kind of... And then wrap it up like that and put it in the fridge. Now, I find I like to chill this for three, four hours, but what's great is you could chill this for three, four days in the fridge, or you can even freeze it and for a couple months. And what's great about this is it's like a slice and bake. You don't have to bake them all if you don't want to. So I'm just going to chill this, and when we come back, we will bake our cookies. So now we're ready to bake our cookies. So preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a baking sheet and line it with a sheet of parchment paper, or you could just lightly butter it or spray it with a nonstick spray. And then we're going to slice into about a quarter of an inch, a half a centimeter slices. I always cut the ends off. And then, you know, you might want to use your uh, ruler for this or just eyeball it. And I said the ends are, and then just space them out. Okay, so now we're going to bake these for somewhere, depending on your oven, about 15 to 18 minutes. So what you're looking for is they're nice and set and they're golden brown around the edges. Okay, our 11 cookies are now done. As you can see, they're beautiful golden brown around the edges. As you, you might know, the longer you bake these cookies, the more crisp they will become. So now what I'm going to do is let these cool completely, and when we come back, we'll make our lemon glaze. So now for our lemon glaze. In a small bowl, I have a half a cup that's uh, about 60 grams of confectioner sugar, you may know that as powdered or icing sugar, and sift that to get rid of any lumps. And then we need some uh, freshly squeezed lemon juice, and I like to strain it to get rid of any seeds or the pulp. And then you will need, I mean it really depends, one to two tablespoons. I'll start with one and then just stir it in. So what you want is a, you know, a, a thin glaze to, that you can drizzle over the top, so you don't need a little more. Okay. That's about one and a half, one and a half tablespoons. That looks pretty good. Of course, you can always adjust it. If it's too thin, add more sugar, too thick, add more lemon juice. And like I said, you don't have to do this. They're, these cookies are excellent just plain. That looks pretty good. And then just take a spoon and, you know, drizzle over the top as much as or as little as you want. 
or you can just do a solid layer as well like so and then what you want to do is it takes like one to two hours for your uh, glaze to dry before you cover and store them so let's try one I'm just going to try a plain one very nice buttery it's got a real nice buttery lemon flavor nice nice and crisp just like a shortbread should be so you can cover and store these for probably five days or more or you can freeze them so enjoy and until next time i'm stephanie jaworski of joybaking.com mm -hmm.